Today's Take 5 with the Saints, February the 17th, profiles a remarkable modern-day saint, Janani Luam, who at the end of his life was the Archbishop of Uganda and who in his ministry and ultimately in his life gave himself up freely against the brutality and murderous regime of the notorious dictator Idi Amin in Uganda. Our scripture lesson that goes with his feast day today speaks very much to the fact of giving oneself over to God in the face of such hostile and oppressive rulers. Today, our reading comes out of Daniel chapter 3, verses 13 through 29. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now, if you are ready when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, an entire musical ensemble to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. The Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times, more than was customary, and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men fell down, bound into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed. Their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree, any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their houses laid in ruins. For there is no other God who is able to deliver in this way. I know this is a rather long reading, but it is a story that goes very well with the story of Janani Lua, born in 1922 in Ekoli in Uganda. 
And ultimately, he was sent to St. Augustine's College in Canterbury to study for the priesthood where he was ordained in 1956. And upon returning to Uganda, he was put in charge of, get this, 24 congregations, which is still, by the way, not an unusual thing to see among clergy in Africa who cover sometimes dozens of churches still to this day. But he also worked for a local theological college while he was serving these churches. But other of his colleagues, including some bishops, took notice of him and sent him back off to study in England at the London College of Divinity. 1969, he was named the Bishop of Northern Uganda, where he became someone who was influential not only in the parishes within his see, but also becoming an increasingly influential voice within the Anglican Communion. Kind and faithful, but outspoken in the cause of justice, ultimately he was elected as the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, which also included the Diocese of Rwanda, Burundi, and Boga Zaire. Well, rising to this position ultimately put him in conflict with the ragings of Idi Amin. And our lesson from Daniel today speaks of a leader who reacted out of violence and literal mania when someone rose up to challenge his authority. Ultimately, Amin viewed all people who were in other positions of power in Uganda as a threat and including in 1976, he ordered Makarere University to be sacked by the government troops because he saw, or at least thought he saw, that there was some dissent rising up within the university. Amin was rebuked publicly by Luam and a number of bishops, and in February 1977, a very brief but intense persecution of Luam directly began to be initiated. His residence was sacked and searched by government troops. And then just a few weeks later, President Amin called Archbishop Luam and several other bishops, other Anglican bishops, as well as some Roman Catholic bishops into his palace to rebuke them for their public dissent against him. He let all of the bishops go except for one, Janani Luam. Luam was never seen alive again. The government officially said that he died in a car accident trying to flee from government troops. A few weeks after his disappearance, his bullet-riddled body was returned to his family. Luam was someone who very much stood up in faith against, literally, a raving lunatic who was in charge of his country. And, in fact, upon being appointed Archbishop of Uganda, very early on in that ministry, he is quoted as saying this to some of his supporters and his critics, I do not know how long I shall occupy this chair. I live as though there will be no tomorrow. While the opportunity is there, I preach the gospel with all my might, and my conscience is clear before God standing up in the face of powers and principalities, standing faithful to one's faith and conscience, standing and speaking the truth to power, Janani Luam did all of these things in abundance and provides reminder to this day, as our passage from Daniel does, that those who speak in the name of God to proclaim against tyranny and oppression and who speak God's love towards the vulnerable and the oppressed will in the end, even if they lose their life here on earth, will ultimately always be saved by God. Plenty more to read about Janani Luam, and sorry this video is a little longer than the others, but he is indeed a man who is worthy of our respect and our admiration, who points us towards a living God who protects us and sustains us in all things. Thank you for joining me. Look forward to seeing you for our next saint tomorrow. Take care.